5,000 samurai warriors armed with swords and antiquated cannons lined the shores. Again, their chief officer commanded Perry, leave Edo Bay immediately. The Commodore refused. I endeavor to inculcate the idea that the government of the United States is superior in power and influence to Japan. The honor of the nation calls for it, and the interest of commerce demands it. The Japanese on shore watched as Perry's crews readied for action. Cannons were loaded, guns were drawn. Perry came ashore. Perry presented his papers and delivered his ultimatum. He would be back and he expected Japan to comply with America's demand to open the country for trade. If not, he was prepared to take Japan by force. He would return in the spring for his answer. Then he and his squadron left Edo Bay. Their deportment and manner of expressions were exceedingly arrogant, and the resulting insult to our national dignity was not small. Those who heard could but gnash their teeth and suffer this insult in silence. After the barbarians had retired, a certain person drew his sword and slashed to bits a portrait of their leader, Perry. There was great fear of Perry. There were uh, the, the portraits of Perry as a devil. There were the portraits of his ships belching fire. All of this served to, to whip up you know, near hysteria on the part of, of portions of the Japanese populace. At the same time, there's fascination. There's fascination with Perry. There's fascination with these ships, these enormous ships that hadn't been seen before. There's fascination with the technological prowess of the Americans. To complicate matters, the shogun had died, and the new shogun was mentally unfit. His advisors took charge, but they could not reach agreement. The head of the shogunate decides that he is going to poll all of the daimyo in Japan. What should the shogunate do? Uh, this is a radical break with tradition. The, the authority of the shogunate is to deal with foreign relations. The title of the shogun, of course, is the great barbarian quelling generalissimo. And yet here is the head of the shogunate asking the daimyo what he should do. Two positions are staked out, one being known as the open the country argument. The Americans do not understand the ethics of humanity and justice. There will be no choice but to start trade with them. The other side being revere the emperor and expel the barbarian. The Americans have come to seize Japan. Therefore, if we don't drive them away now, the other foreign powers will follow. We are in a dangerous situation. While the debate raged, the shogunate remained indecisive. The end of the year was filled with half-hearted compromises and inadequate attempts at coastal defense. Then in February, Perry returned earlier than expected. This time, his show of force was even more ominous. He arrived with double the ships and crew. The honor of the Japanese had been challenged but they had no means to defend it. Their only hope lay in negotiation. As soon as Perry came ashore, the talks began. They went on into the night and for the next 23 days. In the end, the treaty was a compromise, which served both countries' interests. Perry got what he wanted, which was to establish a relationship between Japan and the United States. 
the shogunate got what it wanted in not surrendering its control over foreign relations and opening Japan up to unregulated trade. I'm not sure that the shogunate has been given enough credit for choosing peace over war. And you can say that the, that the shogunate chose to open up relations with America and the West out of weakness, but it didn't have to. The shogunate took the practical decision and they chose peace and thereby preserved the integrity and territorial sovereignty of their country. Before signing the treaty with Perry, the shogun arranged a social evening, a prerequisite for conducting business in Japan that continues to this day. Sumo wrestlers displayed their strength. The first one invited Perry to punch him in the stomach. Another wrestler hoisted two huge bags of rice over his head to show his strength. Perry offered champagne and whiskey. He gave the Japanese gifts. Among those of particular interest, a telegraph, a camera, and a quarter-scale steam railroad, unlike anything the Japanese had ever seen. Japanese engineers would quickly make plans to replicate them. Three days later, the agreement was signed. It was not long before Japan signed trade agreements with Russia, England, France, and Holland. Despite its accommodation to the West, the days of the Tokugawa dynasty were numbered. No longer was the warrior class to control the destiny of Japanese society. Within 10 years, the samurai were officially disbanded. But the samurai ethic had been indelibly engraved into Japanese culture. In 1868, the 15th shogun stepped down. With his departure, 265 years of rule by the Tokugawa family had come to an end. The modern era of Japan had begun.